Darren out here, aka Southern Mama, and uh, welcome to another podcast here. And as I said before, we have a host of different personalities on the show, and this particular show is really exciting to me. We have the one and only Miss Sheila Mitchell here, everybody. Hey, I love you. Darren, I love you too. You Thank look you so God. good. Thank you. you okay, so for some always. of our viewers that are watching, some of our people may not know you, just like some of your people may not know me. So introducing you, you are the mother. I am. The generator. I am. The mother goose to the one and only Yellow Wolf. I am. Full name? Michael Wayne Atha. Yes. Yes. M-W-A. Known, yes. Known to all of his fans <laughs> as Yellow Wolf. As Yellow Wolf. This yes. is really exciting for me because several different reasons. So a lot of our people out there can relate to you because I get writings all the time from certain people of platform that they're actually the mother or the father to them. Yeah. And they see some of the things that we deal with and like, look, this is how so-and-so dealt with it, you know, blah, 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 blah. So this is really cool. This is really cool in the sense that for several different reasons, not only that, but also you were friends with my mom. Forever. A lot of people don't know that. I've known her since she was four. We were next door neighbors all our young lives. We've had shows and people have recognized you at shows and they're like, that's Yellow Wolf's mom. What is she doing here? You know, and you'll be backstage with us. A Yellow Wolf has come to the shows like, how do you know him? How do you know whatever? And so our, a lot of people don't know this, but our families, they grew. Uh, my grandparents was neighbors with your mom and dad. That's exactly right. Okay. And our ages kind of stair steps. So my, my mom was a little younger than you. Yellow Wolf was a little older than me. I think seven years he's older than I am. I think so too, yeah. around that. And your mom was four when we moved in and I think I I was like seven or eight. Yeah. So mom went through looking through some boxes the other day. And, oh, God. <laughs> oh, I know. And she showed me a picture. It's a picture of Wayne, and he's sitting on her bed, and mom's got all of her dolls oh, stacked yeah. around, around him. around him? Yes. I remember that. She used picture. to babysit and play with him, whatever, yeah, and so did. I thought that was really cute. That was fun. <laughs> that was that fun. is fun. What's, what's life right now like, you know, what's that like for you right now? Well, life is amazing uh, through what we're going through. Everyone's going through yeah. it. So I have a great deal of empathy for everyone on, on earth, but as far as... Uh, uh, my family goes, we're all good. The tribe's good. That's good. Uh, Wayno has accelerated immensely in, yeah. tw in 2020, which was really hard to do. Yeah. And my mom's good, you know. I did a my little bit of digging on him. Good. He started dropping out uh, solo records in 05 or solo uh, music in 05. And he ended up signing with Shady Record or... Uh, First, it was Sony. You Sony, yes. Sony. He saw, He did sign with Sony, and he went up there and recorded an album. It was called Fear and Loathing yeah. in a small town USA, but it never was released because he got dropped from the label when they fired uh, his manager, KP. Okay, okay. So then after that, it was like two years, and then Shady yeah. and Interscope. Have you met Eminem and I've only talked Kid to Marshall Rock. on the phone. Okay. I've only talked to him on the phone. It was a late night. They were recording something and they were in the studio and they called me, woke me up at like 2.30 in the freaking morning. But and I've only talked to him. Yeah, Bobby is a good friend. Yeah. His uh, fiance has become a really good friend of ours. So. Yeah. When I went to Nashville, Wayne kept saying, I, I want my friend Bob to come on. Bob, 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 you know, I was like, yeah, yeah, come on. You know, man, Bob's at the back door. You know, we're back in the room. And they come out the room. And then, and, and then Bob walks in it and Bob is uh, his, his kid, kid Rock. Rock. And I was like, your mother was so funny that night because that was at the right it was your mother was like is that who i think it is i was like who do you think it is baby she goes kid rock and when i said that's who it is she went and just like freaking enveloped yes his body. yes that was hilarious that was a good night it's i thought he was night. so humble he is humble. He's so humble because, and, and uh, we got back there and uh, we're getting ready to do the show. My uh, assist, executive assistant, Miss Jody, over here. Love her. Big fan of his. Her kids are too. Her boy sons are. And uh, there's Slay out in Texas doing uh, military work there with Army as MP. And then there's uh, Draven was, I think, in uh, Korea or something. I told him, I said, hey, I hope, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I know you probably get this a lot. Do you mind us uh, saying hey to them? He said, you know, I don't mind at all. And I know. He, that was amazing. He, that was he, cool. he said, and he said the same thing that I have found myself telling people is that he said, I fear the day that that don't happen. You know, he said, these people get up every morning, they go to work and they, you know, they spend money on my, my arts and right. stuff. Exactly. And so the least I can do is take a picture with it. I thought that was so, so nice. And, and there's a lot of people out there like that. Not every person on platform is like that though, unfortunately. No, Amazing a lot of people person don't there. realize that they're paying your bills. Exactly. They're paying your bills. We talked about this so. on the last podcast. I don't like calling them fans. 
I'd rather refer to them as either customers and friends or something like that. I don't like the word follower. Well, the uh, Americans are more like a family, so they're, I they're love family. That. I love that. Yeah. You family. interact with the this fan base. I do. Of Wayne's a lot. I, I see. Do. I see that on social media. I do. It feels it, it feels more natural for me to call you Mama Wolf. I, don't I know, know and that, that's okay. Yeah. You know, that's okay. I'm used to it. I was named Mama Wolf years and years ago, actually at the signing party for Sony. Yeah. I was I hosted a party for my son and the guests were arriving and I was like, I'm Wayno's mama. I'm Wayno's mama. Yeah. No one knew who Wayno was. And then finally I was like, no, uh, you're Wolf's mama. I said, yes, I'm Wolf's mama. <laughs> and then it was mama, you're Wolf's mama, you're mama Wolf. And yeah. then boom, that was it. That was it. So that was like, and Dale was like six months old. Right. She's 14 now. So. Yeah. So yeah, that's been my name for quite a while. And they have grown up with this. And I never did the Southern Mama title. That people put that on me. I was doing the Southern Mama's Be Like, and they started calling me the Southern Mama. Really? So I can relate. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. that they I never, I never that. said I'm Southern Mama. I was. It was just it just uh, started at Walmart and it went from there. <laughs> hey Southern Mama, and I was like, Hey boys and girls, what are y'all doing? <laughs> I'll get things started at Walmart. Absolutely. <laughs> the kids you mentioned, uh, the youngest uh, was six months at the time. Yeah, and Daya. They've grown up in this lifestyle. How yeah. many grandchildren do you have in all? I have six. You have six grandchildren? Yes. Wayno has three. Okay. Uh, Rico is 18. Okay. Phoenix is 16. And Daya is 14. And then Jazzy, my daughter, has three. Uh, Khaleesi is five. Atreyu is three. And Otis will be one tomorrow. I got to hear the last three names again. Khaleesi from the Game of Thrones. Okay. The Dragons. I love that. Atreyu is from The NeverEnding Story. Yes. And Otis is from my grandfather. Otis I Ray. love that. Yeah. Those are really cool names. They I'm all cool about names. different names. Yeah. I know. I like it. I'm not going to be able to remember them, but Listen, I love them. Listen, I can tell you when Jasmine got pregnant with Khaleesi, I said, if it's a girl, because Game of Thrones was big. Yeah. Right? Oh, we yeah. We were into it really hard. <laughs> I said, please, if it's a girl, let's name her Khaleesi. All right. And she did. She did. And she is a Khaleesi. Khaleesi. She's a Khaleesi. That's a name you'll never forget, but I couldn't, I don't think I could spell it if I tried. K H A L E E S I. I love this. <laughs> How has this been for you? Your life hasn't always been in the spotlight. Lot, just like my life hasn't always been in the spotlight. No. Or has it been? Well, no. You, you kind of had ties to. Yeah, but we were always in the background because I dated and my best friend also dated men who were on the crew with the band Alabama. Yeah. Fort Payne. Yeah. You know, went from there. We went Randy Travis, Reba McIntyre, the Judds, Waylon Jennings. I mean, there was everybody. Yeah. They were on the road with everybody, but we were not in the limelight. Right. We were the road. You were the groupies, well, was, the roadies. I was just a, a road widows. We were okay. called road widows. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, this we was were fun. We at home all the time. Yeah. But we had some fun. <laughs> <laughs> we had some fun. I love this. I love this. But yeah, this. we had a great time. It was a good life. And Wayno was on tour buses since he's five years old. He was, it would be fair to say that he was somewhat born into this he lifestyle. He was born into it. Yeah. Even though I thought he'd be a comedian like you, actually. I understand you guys moved to, he attended Carter in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee. Carter Lawrence. Yes. Yeah, that was. There was times in his life and both yours, I understand that it influenced the direction he went with his music. Yeah. Which is another topic, by the way, because there's like 19 different directions. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if you listen to his music, then you hear about our life. Right. Because he is not shy. And I always say it may not be what I remembered it being. Yeah. But he was a sober child. Yeah. So he's telling his story. That's his truth, and he has the right to it. Right. But in almost every song, he talks about our life. But yeah, it wasn't it wasn't easy for him. He I partied did. a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. It was just part of the lifestyle, though. And a whole, it was good times. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, you didn't leave. You stayed together, and you uh, lived this together. Yeah. I drug him everywhere I went. So, <laughs> God love him. <laughs> what was the first time? When was the first time as a mom did you see something that twinkle in his eye where he was like, "This is what I want to do"? To be quite honest with you, we had a horrific car wreck when he was eighteen months old. I flipped a silica eleven times, and I had my chow. Uh, you know, the silica had a hatchback with a glass, and I just put my chow in the back where Wayno was, and Wayno came up in the front and made him a pallet. We were traveling to. 
Oklahoma City. Yeah. He survived that wreck without a scratch. And right then I knew God had a purpose. Yeah. Right then and there, I knew that boy had been saved for something. Right, right, right. But like I said, I always thought he'd be a comedian. He was funny. He was always doing these Well, that was that was where I was going with the direction too. Like when when was the first thing that he did that he looked at you and was like, Mom, you know what? I don't, you know, I like doing this. I like doing this. Not not just of watching other people do it, but like his first experience of like, did you walk into his room and he was he was singing to MTV? When did you see him and say this is I guess when he got expelled from Carter Lawrence for writing a fucking rap. <laughs> what did he wrote he wrote a rap at school? At school, fifth grade. Was this an assignment or he just he just no, freelanced no, 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 this no, no, out? No. Yeah. It was like a, trying to be a gangsta yeah. rapper <laughs> at the time, 12 years old, fifth grade. Right. But he wrote a rap that got him in trouble because he went to make copies of it in the office. Oh. And it had Well, you gotta the, have copies. Well, he there was a girl in his grade that was pregnant. There oh. were needles on the playground. The school had bars on the windows. Oh my it was gosh. In the horrible neighborhood and he wrote about his surroundings okay that's what he wrote about and i got called to the school and me and the principal got in a fight and it ended up with the principal to pay flying off the back of his head but wayno got back in the class <coughs> fun times at carter high uh, or middle or elementary middle 12 wow he was 12 fifth grade then he started winning battles at the mall i didn't know what the hell that meant at the time but i was proud of him i said good Win in battle. This is awesome. <laughs> That's where he gets outs from. Struggle and jelly. Right. They're all from there. Yeah. That's they've known each other that long. Jelly roll. Yes. Yeah. And struggle and we, Jennings. I think we're talking to him. Uh we got him coming to do a podcast. I'm really excited you about know that. What? His wife has a podcast. You have to check okay. out one. Oh my God, yeah. Bunny's the bomb. Bunny's this is good. Really cool. Yeah. This is fun. You have to be willing to get really down and dirty to be on her podcast. Do you really though? Mm -hmm. Does she encourage the smoking of the marijuanas before you partake in the in the she podcast? She encourages of a lot of different kinds. Of wow, stuff. I'm gonna have to go down there. I gotta go. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> it's different. It's fun. It is being from Alabama. What makes Alabama Alabama right? <laughs> Roll tight. And to our Auburn fans out there, I mean, I love you, and but I love you too. You know, it's it's the best rivalry in college ball, but Absolutely. you got to pick a side. Absolutely. I have pictures. People call me a bandwagon fan. No, I've always been. I got ones, as you know, of me in an Alabama. The, 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 don't, so don't give me that hate. Yeah, don't. You don't. know, roll tide. Because it's roll tide. What makes Alabama, Alabama to you? Home. It's just home, yeah. Aaron. It's home. The it is. smell, the sights, you yeah. know, everything. It's home. What I like about this state is no matter what your background, and we have so many different diverse artists and political figures and everybody in between that comes out of the state. I yeah. people don't know that. Yeah, that they don't. Really cool. yeah. They absolutely What do. is your Alabama Saturday in the summertime? By the water in the sun, right? Is there a, is there another way? I don't think so. Crawfish think bowl? So. Yeah, absolutely. What are what is Mama Wolf listening to uh, uh, on the banks of the river with a crawfish bowl going on? Country music. I love country. Country music. I'm CCR. Oh, yeah. You know you, know you love CCR. I love Credence. Love me some Clearwater Revival. I love some Revival. Credence. Oh. I know they would be country now. They were considered rock and roll when they were big. You right, know? right. So now that would be considered the the laid back country. I remember in Southside, uh, off Green Valley Road there at the Green Farm. He's got the rock and roll. He's got the, the hip hop. But we also got trucks, you know, jacked up, riding around in the mud. I mean, I loved it. Yeah, that's Les Row. Yeah. That's Les Row with Kid Rock. The only the one time that I ever got on stage at a concert was actually at Wayne's concert. Where? You was there. <laughs> and you even told me, you said, you should get on stage with him. I was like, no, nah, girl. <laughs> no, nah, girl, it ain't like that. It's all about him today. I'm just here to support him. And a few of those drinks later. <laughs> okay. My favorite song that he sings, come on, and it's Let's Roll. And he started singing, and I got out there, and his family, friends, followers, whatever you want to call them, they're love him. Americans. And they love you. They're still American. You don't they need security. They will just go to bat for you guys. I know. I, I mean, can't even post anything on social media about, and someone get on to me without them attacking. I was like, just, I mean, they come like a... <laughs> freaking army. How has that been for y'all? Because I know I've had my own struggles with that. I well, know. I can tell you that my son is doesn't necessarily like the fact that I'm that close. It's a protective mechanism, yep. I'm sure. But there's some of them that are just so cute. I just can't help it. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. I just love them. Absolutely. And they love him. Absolutely. And because of these people, my grandchildren are living a, an amazing life, yeah. you know, and my son is living an amazing life. So yeah. I love them. 
I love my. Students. You have a very beautiful family. Uh, a lot of I you, do. a lot of y'all could be models. You all Barbara favor Jean. Miss Barbara Jean. That's I right. mean, <laughs> I've looked at the family tree, and this particular guest being different in the sense that I know a lot of your family members. Yeah, beautiful. We people. are family. You are beautiful people. You are too. But thank you. very Thanks, much. girl. I know. I try. <laughs> you know, I will be putting on them rips. <laughs> so next question I got for you. Um, okay. I thought this was Watch really fun. Out. What's it like raising? creative. Actually, it's really simple if you just let them fucking be their self. Let them be their self. Okay, I'm let glad you said that. Let them be their selves. I've never discouraged him from anything right. that, that he ever wanted to do. Whatever haircut he wanted, whatever clothes he wanted to wear, what if he wanted to skate. Did you get the same freedoms when you was a child? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I was raised in an amazing household, as you know. Yes. I mean, we're family. We're Good next people. doors. So, yeah, I was raised in an amazing, loving family. I've never even witnessed a disagreement between my parents. So it must be nice. It was amazing. <laughs> Are you looking at your wife? I'm looking at the camera like, you know who I'm looking at. <laughs> Mummy dearest and poppy. No, I'm just kidding. Good you times. Stop that. I definitely can remember there are a few arguments there, but yeah. But. Well, not me. But anyway, yeah, I did. I did. I have, We had a great upbringing in yeah. a great neighborhood. Damn, hundreds of kids in that neighborhood, man. Forever and ever. It was yeah. really good. I remember that there was a building outside out back at your oh, mom and dad's place. Yeah. Wayne would, he would do these drawings. Yeah, he tags. He is an artist. I have tattoos yeah. of his art on me. It's so good. I got to see one. Well, not right now. <laughs> Did he draw it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he drew it. And my mother, when I thought he would be a comedian, my mother thought he would be an artist. Yeah. Which, you know, he is an artist. If and when we got Wayne down here to do a podcast with him, am I going to have to pull conversation out of him or is it just going to come flowing out like it is with you? He likes, he has a lot to say. Yeah, good. I mean, he has You a keep lot referring to say. him back as a comedian. He is a comedian. He's funny. The motherfucker is funny. He's hilarious. I'm sorry, I keep saying No, it's okay. It's okay. It's a podcast. You're good. But uh, yeah, he's funny. He is funny. He used to do shit like this, Darren. Okay, yeah. he's six years old. Okay. going down the road. He has his his leg, his tennis shoe pressed against his leg. And I'm like, what the hell's this kid doing? You know? uh, and he'll get done and he'll go, <laughs> look, mama, I'm really impressed. Because <laughs> he'd made an impression <laughs> of his damn shoe on it. But uh, boom. <laughs> I know. Well, we were riding down the road one day and there was a man literally standing out in his field, my five-year-old goes, look, mama, that man is outstanding in his field. He's out. <laughs> okay. It's the laughter gifts that keep on giving. Simple, but I'm like, fun. okay. But he's hilarious. He's always been funny. He does, he does skits. I mean, even for Halloween, he put an Instagram a couple of years ago. He was a basketball coach. He put a belly in. Right. He did all kinds of skits. He's fun. hilarious. How many tattoos does Mama Wolf have? I have no idea. Really? No you don't idea. have any idea how many tattoos you have. I don't. How do you feel about face tattoos? I think you shouldn't mess up a pretty face. I really do. I, you know, Caskey has tattooed his freaking head and forehead, and that hurts my feelings, but that's his body. It's his body. It's his body. It's his body. You know, when Wayno did it too, that's what I said. Yeah. It's his body. Yeah. I remember when I when I first when he first started getting the tattoos up here and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, you guys are like models. What are you doing? 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 But it's pretty with tattoos too. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, but I'm just saying, like, you know. No, I agree. You say you have all these tattoos, but I'm not seeing any where I can see skin. I know because it's winter time and I'm covered up. Okay. We should have had this podcast in August. Just wait till August. If we don't call her back. We'll have it out around the poo. And we'll have somebody count my tattoos. All right, all right. What's your favorite tattoo? My favorite? Yeah. Uh, I know. That's like asking, what's your favorite child? Does, does anyone really have it one? It kind of is. A lot like of parents that. out there are like, um, yeah, we do. Maybe the one that John, the quote by John Wayne that says, okay. courage is courage. being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. And I have it going, it goes all the way down my arm. And actually, I got John Wayne's autograph. That and, is cool. And I had the tattoo artist, which is Jeremy, put Wayno instead of John Wayne. I made him out. Oh, of, I love that. Yeah, that's okay. Wayno's named after John Wayne. Yeah. London. John Wayne, that was one, that's one of your favorites. Yeah. Yeah. But they're all amazing. They are. I got some great tattoos. What was, what was, what did mom say her favorite show was the other day? Gunsmoke. And I'm like, Gunsmoke, mom, that's the one you want to go with on the, on the podcast. Like, I love Gunsmoke. And I was like, nothing wrong with that. We liked Gunsmoke. 
I want to go to smoke. They don't make shows like they used to. I, th- I feel like nowadays everything is the same. You know, and that's what I love about the art that you and your family can do is that it's just, it's different. It's not something that you hear or see every day. Thank you. Well, you always used to watch Andy Griffith. I watch it every day. I DVR it. Yeah. I watch it daily. You, you've like seen. five in a row. I'll what is your, <laughs> this is going to end Ernest up being Jake, a podcast listen, question for every guest. We, we can freaking quote Andy Griffith shows <laughs> to my family. Just call the man. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't baby, just call him. What's your favorite Andrew Griffith episode? <laughs> Ernest T. Bass, if I knowed you's coming, I knowed what to do. I'd have thrown to my hand and I'd have wove at you. <laughs> he is my man. <laughs> Did you know that he was only in six episodes, but he wrote all of them? The ones that he was in, he wrote. No, he wrote all of them. Ernest Bass he wrote was all a those? writer on the Andy Griffith Show. He was only in six episodes. It seems like it's so many more, I guess because we love him so much. But yeah. I did not know that he wrote the episodes. And there's a theme song to the Andy Griffith yeah. song, and Andy sings it. And I just found that out. What is it? I can't remember right now, but yeah. You're like a wealth of knowledge. I know, right? I've, useless, I've been broken away useless, from whatever the Q&A are. Useless knowledge. <laughs> no, it's not. I think it's great. It's, it's wonderful. It's fun. It's oh, very fun. That's sweet. Do you have much time with the grandchildren? No, because three live in Huntsville, which is not that far, but it's still two hours away. And two live in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. And one lives in Nashville. Rico's living with his dad. He works with him at the shop. Right. Or for him. Don't get a lot of time with the grandkids that you want to have with the grandkids. I know. You know, your mama is very blessed that her babies are right here. Yeah, and if it was up to her, I would live in the house next door. I'm sure. But... And if you I know. had, if I could do a little commune, a little community, yeah, or whatever, yeah. hell yeah, I would yeah. have little tiny houses for all my children. <laughs> you be like, oh, you get a tiny house, you get a tiny you house, get, you all everybody get a tiny gets a tiny house. house. That's right. I love this. I've always said that I wish all my friends and family could live in the same town or yes. the same street. I know. That would be cool. I know. But their mother is a New Yorker and, uh, you know, I can't fault her for that. I right. love her. She's a New Yorker. Yeah. I, I love that she wants to be home. Right. That's her home. Right. It's like Alabama's ours. Do we all come together once or twice a year? absolutely. Holidays? Yeah. And sometimes the Feathers, which is what I call the older grandchildren, all their middle name is Black Feather. Tariq Black Feather, Phoenix Black Feather, and Daya Black Feather. So my Feathers come down like for Christmas, sometime in the summer for two or three weeks. You know, yeah, they like to go... Here, take yeah, them. take them. And then I can go, here, take them back. Put <laughs> like, them back into play. But yeah, we love it because we share them, my family. I was about to say, they're getting older now, so they got to be more fun when they're older. I don't know how you are. No, I don't do good with the small the kids. but Yes. So you have your time. Yeah. Your time. So I'm going to take advantage of my time my- with the three babies. <laughs> I want them old enough where I could jerk them up by the collar and shake them around if need be. Uh, if you can't I do that with four-year-olds. I don't think you're talking about a dog. I know, but I'm just I'm just not good with kids. Uh uh-uh, get them out of here. It's you know amazing. what I mean? I love my nieces. I like to hang out with them. They're adorable. Um, they're cute. By the way. I, but I'm having more fun now with the two oldest. No offense, youngest, but uh, the two oldest are getting to the point where, you know, I can go and do stuff with them. I don't have to put them in have like a conversation. The, you can. Yeah. Well, that's what I told her. I was like, you're getting so attached to them now. And already the oldest is like, you know, she's more concerned about, you know, going to play games. Of and, uh, you know, friends. And of course. That's natural, I think. It's an outside life. Mm-hmm. You got a little bit of your dad and you got a little bit of your mom and you got a little bit of you that makes you you. And that really comes out, I feel like, in the teenage years. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. You learn who they are in the teenage years. Yeah. Listen, yeah. my granddaughter, her best friend is Alabama Barker, which is Travis Barker's daughter. Uh-huh. And she is insanely gorgeous. She's 16. <sighs> Their Instagrams are killing me. Oh, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I told her, I said, you really don't want your shishi to go to prison, do you? I'm going to, I already <laughs> told don't my make nieces. me go to prison. If you start putting out pictures like that on, on social media, I'm just going to, I'm just going to report every one of them. I'm just going to have everyone I'm taking oh my down God, I'm just saying like, please don't make me go to prison. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Trey, you and Otis and Khaleesi need me. Yeah. <laughs> Fathers are both in the music industry. Yeah. And of obviously, Travis Barker is way, way yeah. famous, you know, and so they want to start a girl band. Yeah. Oh, but. She's 14. Her friend is 16. I believe Alabama's 16. I may be mistaken yeah, if I yeah. am. She, I'm, I believe she's 16. Her name is Alabama. Alabama Bueller. Alabama Bueller. Bueller I love that name. I'm all about different names. Mm-hmm. You know? I love that name, too. They named her that. I actually was watching their reality show when, when she was pregnant, and they when they named her Alabama, I was like, they're naming her Alabama? Yeah. <laughs> so cute. That's She's cute. She's adorable. Oh, my God, those girls. I don't think I want kids. I don't think I want any. Don't have any. No, I don't think she I She doesn't have any. She's very happy. Are she, you? <laughs> you look like you're so young. Like you're like in your like like maybe I'd say mid-30s. 
you know. Wait a minute. Tell me how old I look now. <laughs> you just scaled back at least, you know, five years. You know what I mean? Fuck you, Darren. <laughs> it's okay. I do the same thing. <laughs> Except it's my cameraman. He just has to edit me. <laughs> he showed me pictures yesterday. I'm like, here's like, what I happens. I want a plane to land on my forehead. Dude. That's what I told him. I was like, look at this shit. You brought this shit to me. I was like, I don't, I don't want to help me, Matt. Please help me. He brings my hair down. He shakes my forehead, takes the shine away. And I'm like, this is more like I it. know. And just thin me up. I used to make fun of other people on platform. I'm like, that is not what they look like. And now I'm like, shut your mouth. <laughs> Eat I, it up. Eat I, it up. Exactly. It was like the filters. I was like, you don't look like that. Yeah. Yes. And now I'm like really, really wanting it. The older I get, the less shit I give my friends about using filters on their pictures. <laughs> you know, I used to be like, this is so stupid. You stop, you guys stop doing that. Now I'm just like, mm, yeah, I, I get it. I, ain't I get it, girl. That. I get it, girl. <laughs> I get it. Put, put me some fristy fog on my <laughs> something. That's what I call it because when they're done with it, it looks like you just walked in from a blizzard. It's not even your face anymore. It's, so funny. it's like somebody just threw makeup all over you. You're right. Pixie it's not does. Their it's face not at all. It's crazy. The only thing that looks natural is like, their eyes and then that's this this pretty much it their, their nose goes away i had a friend of mine call me a while back she or i, well, I sent her out she's like hey, let's take a picture i was like cool we get ready to take the picture and at the bottom of the screen um there was a scale it was like a number scale between uh zero and a hundred and she's scaling up i was like what is that she goes oh, it's really cool she's like it scales it edits the picture filters the picture rather uh from a number scale on the bottom she goes i'm usually around like a 16 17 you know what I mean? and i'm like oh really cool and she gets to take sorry she has to put us like an 88 so we're attracted <laughs> because, I, I was like, because of me and i'm like you bitch you know damn well what you're doing i was like you can't even I was like we look good i was like sure you can't even see i don't have a nose anymore but yeah it's great yeah <laughs> Toucan Sam over here. Gee, Willikers. That's hilarious. I have no idea how to use it. I'm so tech illiterate. I have no idea how to use a filter. Speaking about filters and if how I things did, are changing. I would look a lot nicer than this, <laughs> I swear. You look fine. Whatever. You look great. You really do. Thank you. You really do. Thank you. You, wanna... you just say that because it's the truth. No, I'm saying it for two reasons. A, it's true. B, you're my guest and I'm the host. And I, I'm not going to insult you. <laughs> I'm obligated to gonna flatter wait, you right you're now. You're going to wait till we're on I'm going to wait till you leave it like that, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Dude! Jody, Matt, you got your work cut out for you. So Jody, no, you better not leave. No, I will not. I never. <laughs> you know me. I'm not going to do that. I'll do it right to your face. <laughs> know, I'm right? horrible. That's what I love That's about That's why I you. run fast. <laughs> This nose is staying straight for a reason. <laughs> Aerodynamic. Bam! <laughs> no, I love it. And you look fine. Thank you. You look baby. really good. Thank you. And uh, brings me to my next point. What's next for, you know, Sheila? What are you going to uh, do? Are you modeling? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be uh, doing the New York runway. This yeah, spring. you could do it. You could do it. You could totally <laughs> do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Every time I see you wearing black a lot, well, it, you look good in black. Thank you. It's slamming. Is that what when it I is? When I came to your show, I wore like bright turquoise. You really did. That you was surprised a badass me. outfit. The manager come backstage and was like, hey, I don't know if your friends are. I was like, you'll know them. She's probably going to have a defor some kind of hat on. There's going to be like, you know, what is jewelry. it? Scarves hanging down, a lot of jewelry. And I'm going to bet at least 40% black on. So, but it was, it was different. I loved it. I love that though. Yeah, that was a great night. I love you. It was fun. Do you, do you attend a lot of shows? You probably don't attend a lot of shows now. Uh, whenever he's close enough, I'm not going to. Like, no, no, yeah. I'm not going to go out of my way. Yeah. I remember when it first started with me, mom would jump in the truck. She would, we'd be flying everywhere. And now it's like, no, I I'll well, see you when you're close to home. Well, I never really did go. Like, if he was in Atlanta, you know, I would go see him there. If he's in Birmingham, obviously that's way close. Nashville, hey, you know, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I've seen. Do you feel like it's a good thing that it's not really new anymore? I mean, and when I, when I say that, I don't mean like, not that they're not coming out with new stuff. I'm saying like the fact that it's not new, his, what he does for a living now. That it's not new to the public or just in That it's not new or? to you. Like, in, for instance, like my mom, she got really nervous when this Oh, I got, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's old news, mm -hmm. actually. You yes. know, you just get used to it. Right. So, yeah. Because I remember when he first started touring, I needed to have his itinerary. I had to have on my calendar where he was yeah. every day, what travel dates were. I needed to have that. Yeah. But- People ask me now, what's he doing? I was like, I, yeah, I don't know. I yeah. ain't talked to him. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> like, Mama used to do the same thing. She's like, you text me as soon as you land, and you text me as soon as you get where you're going. Now, now that's one thing Wayno's really good at is like calling me when he flies. Mm -hmm. He calls me when he flies, not every time, but almost every time, mm -hmm. just so we can say a little blessing, you know, and come on, he's 40 years old, man. Right. 
It's none of my business what he does. It is crazy to me to believe that he is. He's forty. He's forty one. I know. He's forty one. Not till December. What? Yeah, yeah. Because he's. I, I, let me look at my notes here. Oh wait, he is forty one. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's funny. Research, Mama Wolf. <laughs> Research. Well, you know I birthed, what I mean? I'm good. Well, I birthed him. You think that I could? <laughs> yeah, remember? That, that egg is forty one years old, honey. It's okay. We understand if you forget where you left it. Okay, it's okay. Oh my God, <laughs> wrong. Okay. that's hilarious. He is forty one. Anyway, how does that feel? That he's forty one. That you woke up one day and you're like, oh my God, my baby's forty one. Uh, I it don't feel very good because I just realized it right now. <laughs> this is why I'm not having kids. I'm this like is another gonna, reason why I'm not. Oh, you having wanted me children. to cry. We talked about that before we started filming. No one has a pretty cry. I know. I've never looked at someone and be like, "Oh my God, they're so look at them crying." I'm lying. Lord, she looks good when she's teared up. <laughs> no, somebody go stomp on her foot. You said that you thought that the people that were in the uh, sitcoms or whatever, what was it? The uh, soap the soap operas. operas had pretty cries. They do. They cry pretty. How do they cry pretty? I don't know. I think they put something in their. She eyes. She just got like a tear coming out. She just sounded like this. I think they put something in their eyes because they don't do the. Thing and they don't scrunch it up like he is. <laughs> when I'm crying, it looks like, like I'm taking a terrible shit. Now. Like I'm dying. Oh, yeah. I'm shitting and I may be popping a zit at the same time. It's like, oh. <laughs> 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 Crying feels good sometimes, though. I haven't cried in forever. I like to cry. Do you like to cry? You think I do. it cleans the spirit? I do. Spirit? I do. One of the best emotions in the world is crying through laughter, too. Have you ever done that? Cried until you laugh. Oh, excuse me. Laughed until you cried. Or no, crying during laughter. I mean, you're doing this at the same time. You have my full attention. The only time I ever happened to me, I was pregnant with Jasmine, and I was in the shower, and it had to be hormones and bullshit. Yeah, bit, yeah right. Yeah. But I literally was bawling and laughing at the same time, and it was such an emotion. Right. I mean, it was like it was insane. Yeah. And I really want to do it again. Feels good. I'm not getting pregnant. I was about to say, I mean, that's a lot to have to go through to have to experience that again. Yeah. Not doing Sometimes it. I cry when I'm listening to music. Like, um, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The relation that I have with the laughter mm -hmm. uh, cry that you're talking about. What is that song where it's like, to my knees will I fall when oh, I sing? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Will I be? Like, that I, makes me cry every time, yeah, too. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm smiling, and I'm like, you know, and I'm like. <laughs> it's a happy cry. Yeah, it's a happy. Yeah, about doing it. yeah. Yeah. I love that song. I love that. What's your go-to, like, you know, heart song? Lately, I like that Tennessee Whiskey song, You Belong to Me by Patsy Cline is always the go-to. I love that one. What is, you what is your sing, feeling you? on celebrities or people of platform or very well-known humans or whatever you want to call them <laughs> that are having their careers literally ruined overnight by simply saying something that uh, people don't agree with? Well, first of all, I think people should grow some fucking balls mm -hmm. because if words can hurt you, you are an extremely small human being. Right. You know, they're words. Yeah. We can't let her words hurt us, even though they are the most painful and the most hurtful things we could ever do is spew sure. nasty words towards someone. Everyone should let everybody be what they want to fucking be. Yeah. Some diversity. Let it go. Yeah. Just let it go. All right? Because no one's going to heaven or hell on your coattail. Right. And you ain't going on there. I said it a million times. I'm like, I'm tired of people thinking that mm. just because you have a different opinion. You don't even want to be friends with me. Right. Are you serious? Right. Because we disagree. That's what makes a damn relationship interesting. Right, exactly. You know, we got to hate each other over this shit. I don't like where the world's headed, but it's not my department. It's God's and he's got it. And I don't give a fuck who sits in the Oval Office either. Right. Because I know who sits on the throne. I mean, you can sit there all day long, but if you say one thing, of course, I'm not going to feel this way, but you know, because I have a brain and I don't know how to think for myself. But if you say something I don't agree with, um, I'm either going to say, you know what? I, I respect that, but I don't agree with it. We have so many people now that are like, nope, done. Yeah, we have a delete button now. Delete button. I mean, yeah. We it, have a delete button, an unfriend button. Yeah. An unfriend button. Yes. <laughs> that is so silly. How do you feel about a lot of people taking weight or or, or they evaluate their self? They put so much in into social platforms in a sense that they evaluate themselves off of what the feedback that they get, right? They base their existence off oh, of how many yeah. likes and comments. You're the only person who looks in the mirror, aren't you? I mean, we're the only people who look in the mirror at ourselves. I got my ass whooped by my mother. I came home in the eighth grade one day crying like a baby because the girls were talking about me. My mama whooped my ass yeah. and said, that hurts. You can cry now. 
words are not to make you cry. You do not cry over words. And she also said, they're talking about you. At least you're the topic of conversation. So I get it. I got it then. And then I got it when Wayno got into the business because these beefs, mm-hmm. these people have, they're not having fucking beefs. Right. They want everybody to talk and that's what happens. And they talk. It works. Right. But, you know, not I'm not a celebrity by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just the mother of one. And I know I have a lot of people. Hi, my slum babies. I love you so much. I have a lot of people who who love me without even knowing me. Yeah. Without ever even meeting me. Sure. But, you know, I love them too. So we'd be so boring if we all agreed, wouldn't we? We really would. You know, I talked to somebody the other day and I was like, it's just like everybody in this room. Everybody chose to wear a different color shirt or a different color, whatever. Yeah. How how boring would our world be if we, you know, if we came in and, and we was all wearing the same thing it's or we all thought the same way? It's that's what's happening. Well, it is. They're trying to uniform us. That's exactly right. If you don't believe or think a certain way, then you can be silenced. And I think there's a lot of people that are having issues with that in the sense that the ones that wasn't having issues with that before are now having issues with it now. Yeah. And I believe that as far as being an artist, it's really kind of hard in the sense that now you're worried about offending someone. And that's the last thing that we want to do. But, but we, in your profession, Darren, jokes are at someone's expense every time. Even most of the time, even the, the, the joke teller's expense. But you yes, know, it's, yeah. it's at someone's expense. Yes. That's what makes it funny. If we can't laugh at ourselves, <laughs> you know. You know, that's what makes it funny. So, yeah, I don't. I don't get it. I don't. So I just stepped back. I never post anything political or whatever. You know, obviously I'm a spiritual woman and believe in my father God and post spiritual things at times. And I pray for anybody and with anybody that asks me. I love to talk to God. He's so cool. He is, right? He is cool. No matter what I got going on in my life, no matter how stressful the situation, he just shows up, shows out. I got him and he's sweet on me. Right? I mean, literally sweet on me. He's blessed you a lot. So He has. It's a trickle down effect from my mama. Yeah. Because she's a living angel. I have had... So much fun with you today Thank on you, this. Thank you, Darren. I've had a blast. You have been. It was a lot easier than I thought it would be. It, it, it is. I mean, if these And it had nothing here, to do with what I was doing. It was all you. These are our that. slum babies. These are our <laughs> friends and customers and family. I can tell you right now uh, that if they're feeling the way I am after they watch this podcast or whatever, then they're going to feel the exact same way I do when I say that it is easy to see why the slum family is going in the direction that they're going in such a positive positive direction and such a wholesome and good direction and exercising their talents is because of the leadership, because of the influence and because of the stability and love that they have coming from one of their matriarchs, if I may be so bold as to say so Thank myself. Thank you, Darren. That's very You have been sweet. an absolute pleasure. I, I love, love you, Miss Sheila. Our whole family you. loves you from the <laughs> Bank I Productions family. Thanks so much for watching us. Make sure to follow Yellow was Great Music. Uh, Miss Sheila uh, Mitchell here on Facebook. We love you very much. Y'all don't forget to feed them chickens. Tell your mom and them we said, hey, and for me to you, much love and God bless.